Yeah. Um, right, so what I've got here um, is a A10 Mini Pro ISO. Um, for those who don't know, it's a video switcher. Um, so you've got four, you can attach up to four cameras uh, on the back to the HDMI, and there's one that you can output it to a, to a monitor. Uh, you can also output over USB as a webcam or on the you can output uh, as a streaming device on the um, network port. It's very good, but this one's got a fault. Um, I'll just show it you. It, the, it, the fault is that there's no HDMI out. Uh, so if I attach a monitor, get this monitor, and you can see on this nothing happens. Yeah, if I go into the ATEM control software uh, behind here, uh, I can go into bars, you can see that it outputs bars. Uh, this is all working as expected and it will record fine all four cameras onto a, an attached solid state drive if you're not using the USB as webcam. The problem with it is, like I say, as you can see there, there's no signal on the HDMI. That's the only thing that's failed on this. I've tested all sorts, tried different cables, tried different monitors, all the usual suspects. I'm going to take it apart, do some checks and things like that and see what we can do. Um, so the screws are hidden there, there and here. The area of interest has HDMI out, uh, HDMI 4 in, USB down here's the network port. Here's the offending chip. Now the chip, this chip here, is a TDP158. This is a level shift re-driver and apparently they are popular with the Xbox repair thing as they're used on, uh, on the Xbox so that makes them available on uh, eBay. You know, it, I want to test to make sure that it's not something else. I can beep around, check the capacitors so Pro black on ground. There might be some clusters underneath as well. Probably are some double sided. Uh, but no, I'm convinced that it's the chip. So, another thing I can do is check voltages. So with it plugged in. So I've oriented the chip the same way as it is on the uh, on the screen. DC volts, rock on ground. So VCC according to this, VCC is going to be 3.3 volts, and VDD is 1.1 volts. So VCC and VDD checks there. 3.3 volts. 1.19. VDD 
VDD up on the top 1.19 VCC 3.3 and along at the end 1.19 so, yeah, seems okay. I've been um, reading the data sheet, trying to can work out this chip works like a really fancy logic level shifter. So, input is in one condition and the output is in another condition, uh, but the actual signal itself is unchanged. So, I'm expecting to see on the input a signal and the output, to ha the equivalent output to have the same signal uh, but at a different level suitable for HDMI I think so I've been probing around with the oscilloscope and we take an input at the top here we can see that there's a signal I don't exactly know what that represents I'm not too fussed so there's that top one fairly complicated one so that's one differential pair and there's another signal that's on the thing that's input D, D2 uh, so the corresponding output are these top two so uh, I'll go on this little chip here because it's easier to, to contact you can see there's no signal however we've got down one below Oh, there's no signal either. Right, okay. That's different from what I was looking at earlier. But going down here, uh, you can see there's a signal there on the second pair. And the third pair, which is this one, there's a signal. Right, so on the other side, clip probe here, signal. So, signal right from the top, first pair, signal, second pair, signal, uh, third pair, signal and this bottom pair is a clock so that's a clock signal so uh, again on the other side I want just the trigger that's a clock signal you can see it's much higher up that is a video signal or pair video signals uh, they're called differential pair and there's a pair there, a pair there but nothing here. So the first first one, D2, uh, there's no signal. So I'd say that's where the fault is. Does that make sense? Hope it does. So for me, that kind of confirms that the, the fault is on the chip somehow. And that because the output is missing a, um, a signal, a data signal, there's no output to the display. Hope I'm right. We'll find out, won't we? But anyway, I've ordered a replacement chips. Um, that's going to cost about ten pounds. I've ordered three. So um, yeah, we'll come back in a few days. The chip has arrived. I need to get this board out of the the case so I don't know how much that would help. Might stop it getting melted.
Well, it came off uh, nice and clean. So, good. Now I've got the chip off, wherever it's gone. Let's see it is. I need to uh, add some solder to the uh, pads and get it all soldered back up. I'm using um, leaded solder because that makes life easier. So the dot is there, goes on that way. Oh, I've lost a uh, component. Where's that gone? Booger! Yes, looking for something smaller than a grain of sand. One, two, three, four, five, six, term. So what is term? Right, data sheet, typical use. Term. So it's a pull-up resistor. These are so small. Well, it's nicely lined up, I don't think. Around there, could do with a bit more solder. So we can blow it up. See how much of a mess I've made of this. Mm. It's working okay right it's all back together um, I've connected up the little monitor to HDMI to HDMI uh, as a little computer Raspberry Pi plugged into this uh, and that's it so I can oh, go to a still frame that's my cat 
media cat. Um, it's all working. Job done. Um, very happy with that. Good. So repair. I'm going to take cost of all three chips is the cost of the chips. I've still got two left. Uh, but cost of repair ten pounds. I don't do many chips like that, so excellent. Right, anyway, yes. Um, thanks for watching.